Miss uh, uh, and Miss Miss Clara is your mother-in-law. Is that correct? Is correcto? Yes. 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 See. Sí. Uh, Ms. Clara, uh, I understand uh, that uh, I believe it was you who observed uh, Mr. Elliot peering in your window. See, sí. yes. Okay, tell me about that. And permítame interpretar. Claro que sí. Claro que sí. On the 16th at night, um, after I got home from church, it was around 9.15 p.m., and I was dyeing my hair because I had to work the next day. Um, and I was, uh, after I washed my hair, I was drying my hair, and I had this audio on. Continue. Y escuché el Permítame. 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 So, I, I, so I was listening to an audio about a priest. I was listening to stuff about God, and it was 11 o'clock when I was dying, when I was drying my hair. It was 10.30 when I was finishing dyeing my, uh, drying my hair. Continue. So, you know, I heard the noise, but I didn't think anything of it. I, I wasn't, I wasn't scared. I wasn't concerned. Uh, but then I was uh, drying my hair and I was looking in the mirror and then I looked over my left shoulder and I saw the reflection uh, through the mirror and I see this man who was looking at me. So the um, the living room has a light that goes off with a sensor. So I ran toward um, the living room and I turned on the light. So I he was looking at me. He was just staring at me. So then I opened the door and I said, what are you looking for? Okay. And um, he, he was my neighbor. Um, but I don't know him. He was just said that he was there to see that there was nothing going on. And I, uh, I'd seen him around from a distance, but I don't know him. I don't know how he is. So um, I, I, he said he was my neighbor. And I said, oh, so what happened at your house? And he said, oh, because there was an ambulance and um, first responders. And he said, my aunt uh, broke a bone. Um, and then when he said that, I just shut the door. I locked myself in. I said, oh, no, no, this isn't happening here. Okay, permítame. Claro um, and you know, and I could hear the noise uh, by the door because there's some, there's some like a step stool or ladder that's uh, plastic. So I could hear somebody going up those uh, steps. And um, there was, so there was somebody looking through me, looking at me through the small window by the door. And I just froze and I panicked. Permítame. I I closed the door and I went to my bedroom and I was really scared. I was really panicked. I took the phone. Um, I didn't know what to do. I started praying because I was really scared. I started, uh, I was crying. Continue. I went out to the living room. I turned the outside lights on. I left them on and I locked myself in my room. I barricaded myself with a table. Continue. Continue. Um, so then I thought, what do I do? Do I call Leslie? But then I thought if she leaves her, if she comes, she's going to have to bring the two babies if she so. And what if she, co she comes over and he gets her? So I didn't call her. And I considered calling my son who was at the base. Then I thought, what's he going to do? Is he going to just like come running over here? I was just completely frozen and panicked. I didn't know what to do. Okay. Okay. I was unable to sleep. I was crying all night, um, unable to sleep. And then when it was uh, when it was light out, then I went to tell her uh, what had what had happened, what I'd seen. Senora Clara, un momento, por favor. Claro que sí. Has this ever happened before with Mr. Elliot? Hola, Raccoonist. I had heard uh, noises around the house. Um, and I told my son about it, but I thought it was deer or raccoon or something. When you turned on the light, no. where did you see Mr. Elliot standing? So he was uh, he was standing um, in front of the house on the left hand side under the light. And he was just staring at me with this uh, look. I don't know. Um, he had this look in his eye. And why did you think that he was looking in the window on the door? Because I saw him, that he was looking at me. He was, 
um, there is a, a square, a glass square that doesn't have, that's not covered by a curtain. And I saw him, I saw him looking at me. And does that mean then he was standing right at your door or was he standing in the same place when you saw him outside the house? He was at the door, leaning up against the wall, peering in. <laughs> All right. And was that the same place you said you saw him when you turned on the outside lights? Yes, that's right. And do you have steps to get up to your front door or is it just a walkway that comes up to your front door? There's yeah. steps in front of the door. Pero no son altas, no son altas, altas. But it's not a very high. They're not very high. And has Mr. Elliot ever come over to your house before, to your knowledge? I have never seen him. Do you recognize him as a neighbor? No, because I haven't seen him. Well, I, I didn't hear that, Mr. Rodriguez. No, because I had not seen him. Okay, so this is the first time you saw him. Esta es la primera vez que usted lo vio. Sí, pero he yes. escuchado muchos ruidos, y como ruidos fuertes, como si alguien estuviera caminando. Por eso un día le dije a mi hijo eso, que tenía miedo porque había, pero me dijo, son animales, mamá. Um, but I'd heard many noises before, like some, there was somebody out there walking, and that's why I told my son that I was uh, fearful. And he said, well, it's probably just um, wildlife that's out there. And how did you identify that it was Mr. Elliot who that person was? Uh, because when I walked to the door, I just opened the door, uh, I just a uh, just a gap, and I I turned on the light and I opened the door just slightly, and I saw him. I saw his face, and I said, "What is it that you're looking for here?" And if you haven't seen him before, how did you know who he was? Because when I when I yelled at him and I said, what are you after? He said, I'm your neighbor. And I just came over to see that there was nothing go there's nothing happening here. Um, and what really surprised me is that it was 11 o'clock, 1130 at night. And, you know, he was walking around if he was truly concerned and wanted to check up on uh, whether there was something occurring. Uh, he would have indicated that he was going to take a walk around the property or something. And. Senora Clara, is the person sitting in the courtroom, the person who appeared at your door that night? Uh, sí, es el vecino. Yes, it's the neighbor. And when you were speaking that night, were you speaking in English or speaking in Spanish? Yo le hablé en inglés. I spoke to him in English. And Porque could you poco, oh, sorry, se, se, son unas palabras no las sé, pero la, uh, uh, un poco yo sé. Because I know some, there's some words I don't know, but I do speak some. Thank you. Gracias. And Ms. Demea? Yes. Do you have anything you want to add? Le quería decir algo, por favor. I wanted to say one more thing, please. Hey, uh, un, un momento. Uh, Ms. Demea, anything you want to add? Yes, we used to um, let him on the property to cut wood, and we've never had any... Um, bad interactions with him until this evening that all this happened and now um the any trust that we had with him has been completely broken and especially may, if the interpreter may interpret so he's broken all of our trust and finding out his background we we feel very unsafe now uh, at our home Ms. Demea, do you live in the same home as miss clara we we live in the main home and she lives in the guest home on our property. And both have the same address? Yes. And you're not indicating that uh, Mr. Elliot also uh, looked in the window of the main home where you reside, are you? No, we have dogs and they would they would start barking if he was near the home. And Sabina has no dogs at her house. And so the reason you filed your petition is because of what occurred at uh, Ms. Clara's residence and you just don't want that to occur at your residence, is that correct? Es correcto. Yes. Sí. Thank you. Mr. Yes. Elliot. Sure. Mr. Elliot. Well, it was, it was 9.30 because I was working on my Chevy inside yeah, the garage. 
Okay, hold on a second. So make sure you speak loud enough because Ms. Rodriguez is going right. to then have to interpret. So just use in maybe so, three or four sentences. All right. So that, um, anyways, it was 9.30 at night. I was working on my Chevy and I sat down to take a break. And I sat down in my chair. She had me in the building and she had lights on and I seen her looking out the window. It looked like she was looking at me and I was like, well, I've introduced myself to the owners of the house. So I walked over there to the front door, two steps. They're on the front window. It's a window with a bunch of different bunch of squares, but it's an open window. And the window, and then there's a window right next to it that was open. And she was looking out, and she couldn't see me. So I was waving my arm by the window so she see my arm. So she um, didn't get afraid. She opened the door. And I was like, I, I've introduced myself to, I don't know if you're son or your daughter, but I've introduced myself to him. So I figured I'd introduce myself to you. So my name is James. And because I get along with either your son or your daughter, I just want to let you know that I'm your neighbor. And just like I told them, if there's anything that other bothers you or something that needs that you need help with, I said, I'll be there in a heartbeat. I said, because, um, and, um, she then asked me about the ambulance and stuff because my aunt's 83 years old and because she can't see and stuff, I'm there. The interpreter will uh, request repetition. She asked me about what? It, if you'll take your hand away from your mouth. She, uh, she, 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 asked, she asked me about the, the ambulance and the fire truck that she's seen. And because my aunt is 83 years old, I'm her, basically, uh, I'm her I'm there to help her. I'm, I'm basically her caretaker because she can't see. And she's fallen five times in the past three months. So the ambulance has been there more than just once. And she said, oh, okay. And I said, other than that, I just want to come over and introduce myself like I did. I said, so if there's anything ever, just let me know. And I'll come over and help if I can. And I walked back, I walked back over to the garage. And once I was over in the garage, that's when... Where I never, I never seen lights like this, but she lit. I mean, it lit up. It lit up, like it lit up the whole. Thing. It was a, it was impressive. It was a, a big light show. But yeah, that, that is exactly. Can... What... All right, thank you, Mr. Elliot. And well, well, and because okay, I went to, Elliot. Well, because I went to jail, I didn't take offense to that one bit. I went there. They released me because there was no, no charges of anything. Mm -hmm. Which I'm totally fine. I care. I mean, she she got scared. I can understand that. So I went to jail, but also I was let, you know released. I have I have no I have no anger towards her or the other two uh, whatsoever. So um, and if they lost all their trust in me, that's totally fine. But my aunt, she needs me there. So. I have I have I have no hate against them whatsoever. I have nothing but respect for them. But um, my aunt though, um, she need, um, <clears throat> she I've never I, I've never I've never been here before with the neighbors that the, the owner that lived there before. And I even help I help do the work around the house and I helped them put this beauty salon that is up on top of the hill. Um, Okay, the interpreter will interpret. There were there were neighbors. I'm not a teenage kid. I never once peeped into her windows or anything like that. It's the first time that I seen her looking towards my direction with the lights on. So that's when uh, I figured introduce myself and that. All right, thank you. Gracias. I know I have a record bill on this. It's my I mean, I've been there for two years now. And I've, I've had to take her into the hospital with the ambulances and stuff to come over there a few times to help pick her up off the ground because she's a big lady and I wasn't able to do it myself just like this last time. Um, Is your house, are you the immediate neighbor to? Is what, what it is, is, what is, they're, they're on. Okay, they're on, okay, okay, go ahead. All right. They're, they're, yeah, I believe they're on um, six acres. Yeah, my aunt has um, six acres, acres herself. Um, so, and, and um, in between Rainier and Tonino, 
It's it's the river where the kids go swimming during the summertime. Uh, Anyways, take a right. It's their house, and then you go up the driveway, and then it's my aunt's house. And um, where we live, to tra- the tra- the walking trails where my aunt's property is, it divides it to you can either walk into a, a Olympia or a Lacey Olympia, or you can go towards uh, tonight. It, is your aunt's house immediately next door to Miss Clotta's they're not, house? They're next door. They're not next door. Next door no. It's no. Um, they're you put we about a quarter way down the driveway. It's their house, and then you keep going. It goes uphill. It, it goes uphill. It flattens out, and then it's my aunt's house. So basically, their house is here, and my aunt's house is up here. It's a, the interpreters uh, won't. Be- is having a difficult time um, hearing Mr. Elliot. My apologies, Your Honor. If the interpreter may request a repetition. Uh, I'm going to ask a different question. Uh, Are there any houses between your house and just yes or no? Are there any houses between your house and Ms. Clara's house? And the answer was no. no. La respuesta fue no. Thank you. Gracias. And Mr. Elliot, you said when you were Working in your garage, yes. you could see how, how close is Miss Clara's house to where you were working uh, in the garage? Uh, it's about seventy-five yards, fifty yeah. yards, seventy-five somewhere around there. Thank you. As to the petition submitted by Ms. Demea, I will deny the request for the order on that petition. Ms. Demea just lives on the property, but the actions that were of concern regarding Mr. Elliott were not at all directed to Ms. DeMeya and she was not a participant in that. As to Ms. Clara's request for a protection order, I will grant that since it was in her portion of the dwelling units on the property that this occurred. Claro que I, sí, la necesito. Yes, of course I need that. And I find that uh, Mr. Elliott's explanation that he came by to introduce himself at 930 after dark on an April evening, uh, disingenuous. No, since, well, Mr. Elliot, since Mr. Elliot resides at the adjoining property, I won't prohibit him from living there. But Mr. Elliot, you are not to go on to uh, Ms. Clara's property at all. Yeah. 100 feet of the dwelling unit. Yeah. You're not to have any contact with the minor children that reside on the property. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're to have no contact uh, with Ms. Clara, whether she's on the property or off the property, or not to have any contact with her anywhere she is. Not well. We will provide Mr. Elliot a copy of this order. And Ms. Clara, this order will be in effect for one year from today's date. If you need to have it renewed, you'll have to come back to court and make that request. Senora. And a copy of the order is available to you in your district court file. Eso es todo, señora. Gracias. Eso es todo por hoy. Gracias por uh, darme, darme esa oportunidad y le pido de todo corazón. Vivo en pánico ahorita, no puedo estar bien. Cada ruido que escucho uh, me da terror y pánico y, y quiero llorar y estar. No puedo salir ni del carro porque estoy paniqueada. Llego a las nueve y media de la noche y tengo miedo. Pánico de mi casa. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, Your Honor. Every noise that I hear just, you know, throws me into a panic um you know i i'm even afraid to get out of my car when i get home at 9 30 at night i'm just panicked all right well i i've entered the order today bueno, he, he, he presentado la orden el día de hoy. muchas gracias thank you very much thank you Ms. rodriguez thank you, Your Honor. gracias Igualmente. por la interpretación All right, and Ms. Kastik, you, the two of you are neighbors, is that correct? Uh, pardon me, I'm sorry, Ms. Dukelchain, the two of you are neighbors, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and you say that uh, Ms. Kastik uh, has been taking photos and videos of you and she yells at you. Yes, sir. She's been constantly harassing me in my household, being a nuisance. And now it has come to um, my attention. She has been photographing and videoing me. Um, and when I came to, I have a whole, I, I would like to read something. May I read something about the situation? Go ahead. Go ahead. On April 17th, 
Approximately 12.30 p.m., I got home. I just walked in the front door to let my dogs out to go potty before I started my shower. I was alerted by my dogs barking very loudly. I looked out my window, my sliding glass window that is um, facing my um, backyard, and I caught Ms. Caustic videotaping over my six-foot fence into the backyard from the corner of the photo shown. She was seen hiding behind a corner of her shed while she quickly heard me open the door. She quickly left. This is not the first time I've witnessed Ms. Caustic in this sort of behavior. When I noticed Ms. Caustic videotaping, I immediately opened my sliding glass door to walk out into my backyard and ask why. As soon as I did, in a polite manner, Ms. Caustic turned the corner and suddenly became very hostile and aggressive. She stated she has and was been texting me these videos. I blocked Ms. Caustic about two years ago due to her bothersome text messages. I do not have any contact with Ms. Caustic. But I guess the message wasn't cleared when I haven't been responding years at a time. She then started yelling at me, throwing insults at my career choice. She was screaming so loud, I'm sure the whole entire, entire neighborhood heard her. Um, it was very extreme and sudden and quickly became more aggressive. I was very shook up. I noticed as she was yelling at me, her face became red and she started to approach me towards the fence. I noticed that this time she was alarmingly aggressive. I asked her why and she just continued to mock me and yell at me. Throwing insults about my career choice, I am unsure why. At that time, I go to turn around and walk in my home while Miss Caustic starts continuing to throw insults. She pulls out her cell phone once again, starts videotaping me over my fence. At this time, I want to add again, I just got home and I was in my intimates. I was in my brassiere. I ran out to see my dogs barking and she still continued to film me in my intimates as she was harassing me about my career choice. <sighs> I just walked in the door and I get hit with all this. This is not okay and this is absolutely unacceptable. I feel on edge due to the unpredictability of Ms. Caustic's behavior. I will not stand for Ms. Caustic's constant harassment and intimidation tactics. I will not stand for a 50 year old screaming at me and trying to belittle me while trying to videotape me for her pleasure. Ms. Caustic is a constant nuisance. We have since built an eight foot fence to stop Ms. Caustic from watching us. It is up. I was and still am very worried about Ms. Caustic and she may become violent. I was unsure if she had any weapons at the time, but I could tell, excuse me, her demeanor seemed very threatening. I'm unsure what I did to deserve this, but it frightened me. It proved Ms. Caustic is aggressive. She's a loose cannon and unpredictable. And I'm unsure when she'll fire off. Okay, so let me I ask do, you some questions. Me, I'm sorry, I want to add one thing. I'm sorry, excuse me. I do want to add one thing. I would like to add again that I'm stressing this because I'm a domestic violent survivor. We moved in this home two years ago because we our last home was unsafe. Okay, I have to protect myself and my mother I do not have any social medias. I do not have any photos of me out there. I need to protect my home and myself and my mother. I should feel safe and I shouldn't have to worry about that. I don't want my pictures on the internet. I don't want Miss Caustic filming me. I do not have consent for that. She's never had consent. I have to protect okay. myself, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. So, Ms. Duplichain, am I pronouncing that correctly? Duplichain. 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 Ms. Duplichain, uh, tell me what you think started all this. I believe Ms. Caustic had an issue with our fence. The fence has been fixed. Anytime there's been an issue in the past, Ms. Caustic reached out to my mother who owns the home. I am unsure why she continues to harass me. I just live here, Your Honor. I work full time, you know, I do everything. I live here and help my mom out. I'd like to interject, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Duplichain, I haven't sworn you in. If you'll raise your right hand, I swear the testimony in this case to be the truth, the whole truth, yes. and nothing but the truth. Okay, now yes, we're going to do it one at a time. So, we're, you know, go ahead, you can put your hand down. That's fine. Uh, we're going to first start with uh, what uh, Willow said. So, Mr. Coker, do you have any questions for Willow Duplichain? Um, I do. Uh, Ms. Willow Duplichain, um, you say, I mean, you're using words like constantly harass. You're using words like she's doing this for her own pleasure. Um, she's doing this because she, she's a loose cannon. We have the declaration that you submitted to this court, and then you just read into basically the record, your declaration. So you referenced an incident that involved like a tree that had fallen between the properties a couple, maybe a year or so ago. That has nothing to do with anything that she wrote a letter okay. to my mother and that was done. This is about Miss Caustic's behavior, about how she's aggressive, feels the need to videotape me, harass me and call me names over the fence. Over what issue? A fence that was fixed. The, the fence was fixed. 
It is more than that issue. It is Miss Caustic's aggression, her behavior, and her obsession. Let me let me interject this. No, 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 Ms. Duplatin. Uh, no. Let me interject, one, please. No, no, one witness at a time. All right, and Ms. Willow Duplachain. So I, I understand now it doesn't mean anything, but you put you referenced this tree incident in your declaration. And then in your statement today, you mentioned that there were some harassing text, as you as you indicated. Um, but now you're saying that that's irrelevant. I'm saying what is irrelevant is the tree, Your Honor, or sir, I'm sorry, the tree that fell on the fence. Okay. There is the text message. I'm saying Miss Caustic, when she came to yell at me that day, Your sir, she um, admitted that she has been texting my phone these videos. That is why she was videotaping. She's been texting me these videos. I do not get texts. I have blocked her two years ago due to her. Okay. I do not want so, any, Your Honor, I do not want any okay. contact. All right, Ms. Duplicate, Jane, okay. right now, all you're doing is answering the specific question asked. So, Mr. Thank Coker. You. And then Your Honor has copies of the, the, the text messages that we've submitted. Um, so, Ms. Duplicate, last question um, on this incident that you alleged occurred on the 17th of April. Um, there's been issues with your dogs coming into Ms. Caustic's yard, correct? Or do you, you don't know, do you even know if there was any issues? No, sir, there is no issues. We have a fence gated around our full property. There is no entrance. Okay, so it, it would, is it your opinion then if it, it would be impossible for your, your dogs, you have a couple pit bulls, correct? Excuse me? You have a couple pit bull dogs, is that correct? No, they're mixed breeds. That is okay. nothing Fair of enough. the sort. Whatever, you have two dogs, right? I have two dogs. And do, to your knowledge, now, I understand you've ignored Ms. Caustic or blocked her or whatever, but to your knowledge, has Ms. Caustic ever complained to you in the last year about the fence, your fence being dilapidated, having holes in it, your dogs getting in her yard? Has she ever come to you or to your knowledge, has she ever come to you? No, sir. She has never came to me. Okay. Um, other than the... Uh, the April 17th the allegation of this incident that you're describing, um, you don't mention any other specific incidences of, of conflict between you and Ms. Caustic in your declaration. And you really didn't, you've spoken in vague terms in your, in your testimony today. Is there any specific incident with a date involving Ms. Caustic other than the April 17th date that you mentioned in your declaration uh, that was part of your petition? No, sir. All right. Other than her constantly questions. around the fence, videotaping. I don't remember an exact date, but I remember last summer she was doing something of the sort. I usually just let it go, but now it's come to my attention because she is videotaping me. And one more question, um, Ms. Willow Duplachain. Um, did you, in this exchange uh, that allegedly occurred on the 17th, did you, were you berating Ms. Caustic? No, sir. I said nothing of the sort. Did you ever refer to her as a quote, fucking psycho? No, sir. So none of that ever happened? No, sir. And you I mentioned said she today, was mentally ill because she was videotaping me after she berated and belittled me about my career. Okay. And the now, kind of person I was over yeah. a fence or whatever she thought. Right. And did you make any comments at that time when you were, were you angry on the April 17th date? No, I was not. Okay. I had a and great you're not day. angry today. And then today in your testimony, when you're reading the thing, the, the statement to the court, you made a specific comment as you didn't want a quote, 50 year old woman doing whatever she was doing. Did you make any comments about Ms. Caustic's age in this interaction on the 17th? Nope, just today. Did you make any allegations about her career or what she's doing at home? No, sir, but she said that about me. Okay, I don't have any further questions, John. And uh, Yavana Duplicain, yes. you may go ahead. I just want to say as the homeowner, she has never once approached me in three years to complain to me about any issues she had with the fence, the dogs, my property. She has never once, the last time I spoke to her was three years ago when we moved in. Okay. I am the homeowner, not my 26 year old daughter. She once had an issue with a tree. She sent me a certified letter instead of coming to my door and knocking nicely and saying, geez, there's a problem with the tree. Within a week, the tree was down. Her dogs have jumped. Dogs do that. They see each other through a an old fence and they go at it, okay? Hers pushed my the fence towards my, buckled. It buckled into my yard and I decided, okay, I'm, I've had enough. I hired a contractor last week. He came and put fence the whole property. There's no issue now. 
Okay. The issue is that my daughter walks out and sometimes I walk out in little dresses into my yard and she sees me from her window. And she came that day when my 26 year old is in a bra and little pants and filming her. What, what is a 50 some year old woman doing filming a young girl? We don't know what she's doing with that film. Is she spreading it on the internet? None of us have Facebook or anything. You know, that's got to stop. That's why we're here. We're not here for the fence. We're not here for the dogs. If she had an issue, she can talk to me as a professional woman, two professional women, and I will take care of it. I have taken care of everything. Okay. I'm even going to plant trees so that I don't have to look at her. But when she comes in aggressive behavior towards a young girl that already has domestic violence issues in her past, we're not going to have that. Right. Mr. Coker, any questions for you? This is Duperkin? our only avenue sure, that I we have. For I, I don't think so. I think her, her statement is pretty clear. She didn't see anything. Um, okay. But right now. Okay. No she should yeah. be ashamed of herself. All right. All right. And do you wish to ask questions of Ms. Costa? Do I, Your Honor? At this time, yes. we move, I'd move for, uh, uh, I'd move to dismiss at this point. Um, I think that the petitioners failed to make their case. Um, I mean, uh, no temporary order was entered in this case. Um, they haven't submitted any additional information. I'd move at this time to, uh, to for dismissal of the petition. She yeah, doesn't, excuse that. me, I she think did it okay. once and okay. once okay. is okay. enough. Okay. Uh, I will deny Sorry. the request to dismiss without the arguments of the parties. And I do think that there's at least a basis for the court to consider this. Uh, Ms. Duplichain uh, Willow, I'm gonna ask you a question. Yes, sir. Uh, have you seen photos or videos that Ms. Kostick has taken? I don't, I, I haven't. I don't have social medias, but I would like her to produce those because I did witness her videotaping me to my face, Your Honor. She was videotaping okay. me and I walked okay. away. Okay, yeah, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, sir. I just need specific information. Okay, yes, All right, sir. so you, you see her taking photos or doing videos, you believe, and... Yes, your concern is that they're being posted. Do you have any indication that they have been posted anywhere? I understand you don't have social media. Has somebody told you they saw your I'm not. No, photo I'm not there? on social media. I don't know why else she would take a video or a photo otherwise for okay. intimidation tactics or what. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. I'm so sure. your concern is what is she doing? Taking apparently taking photos or videos. Yes, and why is That's she harassing concern. me and calling me names for no reason, Your Honor? We fixed everything. I just want peace in my home, Your Honor. That's all I would like. Okay, after the fence was fixed. Yes, sir. And you're in the backyard with your There's dogs. There's been no issue since, Your Honor. Since and the fence was fixed. There's yes, been no sir. Issues? It's been very peaceful. I would like uh, okay, it to remain I, that way. It, 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 all right, Ms. Duplichain. <laughs> I'm trying to get a handle on this. So are what you're saying now is that the interactions between you and Ms. Kostick stopped after the fence was fixed or they've continued? They stopped. I do not want any contact with Ms. Kostick. Okay. When was the last time you heard from Ms. Kostick? On April 17th when that happened. But we don't know what she does behind her. Okay. okay. One at a time, please. Okay. So how about the... Was there interaction between you and Ms. Kostick prior to the fence issue on the 17th of April? Yes. Yes. And she's constantly on the corner of my fence over here. She likes to talk to my dogs, poke at my dogs. I never, I usually let it go. I never had an issue. I let them in. I say, okay, dogs, come inside. I know she has an issue. It seems obviously with my dogs. We fixed the fence. Everything is over. I'm just seeking okay. protection, Your Honor. Oh, okay. So, Ms. Duplichain, uh, so all of this that you described, then, uh, did all of this just occur on the 17th of April? He keeps his yes, sir. Other than her prior, I blocked her when she was texting. And why did you block her prior to the fence issue? Because she was constantly texting me, and I don't want any contact with Miss Costa. Yeah, she doesn't know how to like. I don't okay. want to talk to her. One at I don't a time. Have a reason. I don't want to talk to her. She's fifty years okay. old, and I'm twenty six. Okay. Well, I, I'm not sure what the age difference has to do with it, but let's. What was she texting you? I'm not the homeowner. I don't know, was, Your Honor. I blocked her. She no, wanted our dogs to have a play date. I think at first, and I just I have too many things to do. I do not want a relationship with Miss Costa. 
And she doesn't get the. She doesn't get it. Okay. She would so, ask Willow to go into okay, the hospital. Okay, Miss Duplachain. Yvonne Duplachain. I know you're the mom, and you want to be protective. We're. This is a court. We're I doing know, it. I understand. By witness, please. I understand. Okay, so Willow, I need your full attention here. Yes, sir. Okay, so at some point in time, you said Miss Costic was reaching out to you, apparently benignly for play dates with dogs. Eventually, mm -hmm. you got at. You just didn't want to do it, and you got tired of hearing from her. Yes, sir. And so you blocked. Yes, sir. Okay, which is fine. You're certainly entitled to do that. And at that point, at that you, point, every okay, hold on. I'm no, sorry. Let me ask the questions. What you? When did you? After you blocked her, when did you next hear from Miss Costic? April seventeenth, Your Honor. Okay, when did you block her? Give me some idea when that date was. Um, pro probably about two years prior, Your Honor. Okay, so you went two years without hearing anything from Ms. Costa. Yes, sir. And then on the 17th of April, there's this fence issue that, uh, you know, I don't know whether it's damage to the fence or the fact that dogs can go back and forth, whatever. That becomes an issue and this sort of takes off. Yes, sir. Okay. The, how long after the fence was damaged was it fixed? Um, about seven days. About a week. Okay. We had someone come up. In so time. it was during that seven day period that you're referring to here where there the this was constant back and forth about what you described as her yelling at you and criticizing you. Is that correct? That was on just on the 17th, Your Honor. During okay. our during our yes. Okay. So outside of the 17th of April, Ms. Costic doesn't say anything to you. You've blocked her on the text. So she if she's sending you stuff, you're not getting it. Yes, sir. And we're, everything we've discussed today then revolves around the 17th of April. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And did you receive a copy of uh, Ms. Costick's declaration that she filed with the court? No, sir. Okay. Uh, it was filed today, uh, and I'm just looking at it for the first time. Uh, Mr. Coker, let's do this. Why don't you um, ask some questions of Ms. Costick? the main points that you want the court to consider. Thank you. Um, Ms. Kostick, so we met and um, uh, you submitted a, a declaration that addressed, kind of addressed the history with uh, the petitioners in this case, correct? Yes. And so if you could just, uh, we've heard about an incident involving a tree. <laughs> we start with that. Um, that was a couple of years ago? Yes. And you submitted some text messages that were surrounding that time, correct? Yes. And if you could just describe to the court what, what happened, what was the incident with the tree? December 2021, uh, a neighbor on the other side of the Duple Shanes had let me know that there was a tree falling. There had been interaction. Uh, the tree was falling from someone else's property onto theirs. I received texts from Willow and Yovana stating that I needed to call to find out who did it. I could arrange for the insurance to come take care of that. I responded to either Willow or Yovana and I said, I don't understand this. This is a tree on someone else's property falling through your knocking over your fence. So there is a current issue, which they remedied uh, starting May 3rd. We're, and not, they, we're not there. Uh, we're just at the tree issue two well, years this, then, so I know, I'll get to that. Okay. So that was the tree issue. Was there anything more of that tree issue? No. And the last texts are submitted as evidence there from 2021 right. or 2022 of my contact. Okay. So um, then we spin forward to April 17th, which is addressed in the, <clears throat> in the petition. Correct. Mm -hmm. that yes? yes. Just answer out loud for the record. Um, and have you had some issues with their dogs with the neighbors, with the petitioner's dogs in the interim? Yes. Okay. Just kind of describe to the court. We have some photos and what, you know, what those photos show. No, no insult to the dogs because the neglect of the homeowner and inhabitants have led the dogs to come out. So uh, in 2021, their dog, their dogs would both come out. There is a picture of their white dog on my front porch. There is a picture of their black dog in my yard. I have two dogs and they, um, when my dog, and I just had one dog at the time. And when she was in the yard, their dogs would come through because they didn't have the fence completed. So there was a totally open spot, maybe blackberry bushes or something, and would come through, antagonize my dog. There was an episode in August of 2021 where I actually had to go to the emergency room. I took care of it. I did therapy for my hand because I've got stuff to do. I didn't 
bother them with something. Then <clears throat> I think eventually they had their, they finished their fence. And last year, uh, they the the fence that's farther south, they had um, their dog was coming through the fillers of the fence and had broken it. I reaffixed it. I'd messaged Yovana April seventeenth or no August <laughs> August twenty seventh of twenty twenty three, and just said, you know, I I'm I'm happy to adhere the fence again because it was it had been multiple times that the fence had come through and I just needed to nail the filler back. I never heard, I didn't address it. I did create another fence. So do you want me to speak of April? Then I want you to get to what happened on April 17th. So April 17th, because I'm documenting the fence and the filler and there are photos in the exhibit of the, the fillers uh, because when they do come through, you know, I want to say here, this is what this looked like now. This is what this looks like. And so there was more coming through. And I had created a secondary barrier to a small woodshed that's eight by eight or seven by seven connected to the gate. And so I was videoing the dog because they were coming through. My dogs are not even in there. You know, they want to engage. They want to interact. That's fine. They're, they're dogs. And then I went back to go sit down. I wasn't even in view. And then I, and then Willow came out. And she said, are you, are you photographing my dogs, honey? Or, or, you know, and she came out, I can't see her because there is a very steep hill. And not only is it a six feet fence, which in their petition, it's referenced as five, but I don't know what she's wearing. And so I had to come and I had to come out because I had already gone into a part of my yard. I don't think they have full view of that part, but they do have a lot of views of my yard and apparently monitor when I'm in and out of my house per the petition. So I came back and, she, and I asked her, I said, I said, would you take care of the fence? And then there's a tree that's coming over, leaning over my property. And then she said, you don't work. Nobody in the neighborhood likes you. I'm this age, you're this age. And I, you know, it's just personal attacks. I have two topics that I've spoken with these, these folks about. The tree issues, especially couple years before when they were telling me to take care of it and the, the dog issues. It's just safety. It's just basic. And I could have been very nasty. I could have called animal control the multiple times that they were in my yard or worse, but I care about the dogs. There's weird references in there too, all kinds of stuff. And it's fiction. Did you, and that issue on the 17th, did you, you know, Miss Doppelshane made it, she sounds like very much like a victim of that, you approaching her, but actually she's the one that came out. Yeah. And did, did she ever call you, you put in your declaration of a fucking psycho? Yep. Yeah. And did she, I mean, it sounds like she said to you what she's claiming you said to her. Very projected, projected. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, have you ever posted any pictures or videos onto the internet of either of these folks? No. No, uh, when I, when Miss Yuvana uh, uh, Dubalchain claims that she comes out in whatever kind of dresses, do you have any idea what she's talking about? No, and per Willow's petition, she states that why do I go in my house when they come out? You know that that is something that Willow wrote. Like, why does she go in her house when they come out? I don't want to interact with them because they have gone to other neighbors and called other neighbors names. Like, called very nice neighbor an old man and just went over and insulted him. I don't- I don't have any other hearsay. Hearsay, your honor, uh, not relevant. Oh. All right, uh, what's the purpose of taking, you're taking photos? To monitor when their dogs actually do come through again because they had broken the filler and the there are photos- Or no, yours purpose? broke the filler. Okay, don't, okay, one witness at a time, a please. Issue. Okay, for what purpose are you taking the photos? I'm taking the photos because I've asked in a text message to Yovana to take care of the fence August 27th of 2023. It hadn't been addressed. So I had remedied that by putting logs up against the fence because in the one of the pictures, the entire post is coming through. Then later on, as time goes by, that filler post is broken and the dog's head is through. So I'm taking those to prevent 
So they can't say it's my fault or whatnot because they have in the past told me to take care of things that are their responsibility. And it's, and now that I have read the petition and know that they're monitoring my inside and outside. No, we're not. Um, okay. So your purpose is to take a photo of their dog attempting to get into your property on or property. on your property. And you want to show it to Yvonne Duplachain, the property owner adjacent to you, and say, we have a problem. Can we get a fix? That, that's your point? Is the point I of already, the taking the photos? So when the dogs actually do come onto my property, I don't want them to tell me that I need to take care of it or it's my fault. But, because okay. if there's dogs... I know I understand, but that's why you're taking the photos. To show Ms. Duplachain, see, your dog is on my property. Okay, so you have but, no reason to take photos onto their property. No, and... These only, ones. your only photos you're taking are of your property mm -hmm. and the fence line. Mm -hmm. The day of when Willow Duplechain initiated contact me and initiated contact with me after she was berating me, I did start to film her with my camera, but my camera doesn't have, or my phone, but it doesn't have memory. So it's not, and I can't see her. Is that the only time you've done a video? Yes, of yes, of that person or her okay. other inhabitants there. And dog. can you think of any reason you need to video them or their dogs on their property? I haven't videoed them okay. on their property, you only online. Any reason you need to do that? No, and I have not ever. All right. Uh, Your Honor, may I address? Okay, hold on, hold on, me? hold on. I'll let you know who's next. Willow, it's your petition. You get the last. Factual word, anything else you want to add? Yes, sir. Miss Caustic did uh, belittle me, calling me names because I'm a hairdresser. She did scream my name very loudly uh, that all the neighbors heard. So I do want to add that. Of course, she's not willing to say that. And she did videotape me above my fence as I was walking away. Yes, she did, Your Honor. I do want her to delete any photos she does have. Uh, the memory thing, I'm not buying. So the fence issue was fixed. It's not about the fence or the dogs. May I address myself one last word, Your Honor? Okay, Please. go ahead. Okay. As far as Ms. Constick contacting me, I changed my phone number, about, phone number about a year and a half ago. I've never heard from her. B, the, the, the first tree issue she had that she supposedly, she texted me, yes. I was concerned about her because the tree was so huge that it was caught between two spindly. If it fell, it would have taken her out in her bed, okay? I contacted her out of concern for her. Three, when I first moved in, I purchased the house. I didn't realize there was an opening in the gate, in the fence. I didn't walk behind the trees to see that. When I found that out, I hired a contractor. He put the fence up and that was up maybe a week after we found out that our dogs were in her yard, okay? We have remedied everything that, that is necessary. We do not watch her. I could care less what Sarah does with her life, okay? The problem is the videotaping of my daughter without her consent, and, and she's not allowed to do that, period. I don't care if it has, she says it's about the dogs. It's not, okay? And, and not videotaping me as well, because we haven't addressed that. All right, thank you. Against my, yeah, thank you, sir. In this case, the petitioner, Willow Duplachain, uh, resides with her mother on her mother's property. Uh, there are two dogs resident on that property. There's at least one dog resident on the adjacent property owned by Ms. Costick. Maybe two dogs now, I'm not sure. And dogs and fence have been seemingly the primary issue of contention between the parties over a couple, a period of a few years, I guess is the best way to say it. It appears that since the 17th of April with repairs to the fence, and I've been told uh, the Dupla chains have a new fence up, that those issues should be now resolved. Uh, there is a concern by Ms. Dupla chain that she was videoed on a specific day, the 17th of April, and photos were taken previously, uh, seemingly mostly of the dogs. Uh, but her concern is that there would be no reason for Ms. Kostek to have taken a video of Ms. Duplachain as the two of them engaged in a verbal disagreement or altercation. 
And her concern was that might be posted somewhere. Ms. Costick indicates she's not posted anything. She acknowledges doing the videotape on the 17th of April. And subsequent to the 17th of April, uh, there's been no contact between the parties. With that understanding, uh, I'm going to deny the request for a protection order. What I will say is that Ms. Duplachain has made it very clear, Ms. Kostick, that she does not want you to have any contact with her to say nothing to her. And certainly there would be no basis for you to photo or videotape Ms. Duplachain. If you're gonna take photos of dogs coming into, you, into your yard, you're welcome to do that for purposes that you have described, but uh, taking photos of Ms. Duplachain are totally inappropriate. And she can come back and file a petition saying, after the court hearing, she continues to do that and that will change it, how the court looks at things. But uh, for now, uh, I will not grant the order. Uh, and likewise, um, I would recommend uh, Willow Duplachain, uh, you not uh, say anything to Ms. Kostick either. Uh, I'm not entering an order, but uh, I'm trying to reduce the friction points here. I will say that Yvonne, it's Yvonne, Yes, yes, Yvonne Duplachain early on um, issued an invitation to Ms. Kostick that if there are issues with the dogs, you could come speak with her. I don't know. Uh, the two of you aren't parties on an order here, uh, but sounds like with the fence being fixed or installed that that hopefully will not be an issue going forward. I deny the order. Uh, I hope the two of you respect each other's requests. That is dogs on property and no contact between Ms. Kostick and Ms. Duplachain, uh, Willow Duplachain. All right, and we'll get a copy for Ms. Kostick, who's present in court. And Ms. Duplachain, you can get a copy of the order. It's in your electronic, or will be shortly in your electronic file district court, or you can come in and get one. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, please be seated. All right. So, uh, I read what the parties have filed, and um, I will let you know right up front that uh, I can't do anything about the gate. The gate that uh, Mr. Brown seemingly has installed on the easement road uh, is something that if you're going to want to address as a violation of the easement, you're going to have to go to Superior Court and get an order from Superior Court regarding whether uh, Mr. Brown has the authority to restrict access on the easement uh, in that way. And I, I think that's probably the main issue here. Uh, so I want to let the parties know we're not talking about that today. The gate's there. I can't do anything about it. What I can do is regulate the interactions between the parties. And I do note that the Avenaries have expressed concern with Mr. Brown's approaches to them as they try to navigate their way through the gate. Uh, both, you know, mostly verbally, uh, and then also indicating uh, their discomfort with the fact that on at least one occasion, uh, Mr. Brown felt compelled to drop his pants and um, in the teenage vernacular, moon them. So uh, I'll start with the Avenries. Understanding that's really all we're addressing is the nature of the personal relationship. Do you have anything else you want to add? that you think I perhaps didn't pick up in your filings or that you haven't said yet? Yes, it's about Brown's uh, perhaps in angry outbursts constantly. And it uh, is the uh, delusion mind concerns us greatly and make us feel for our lives. Um, and we share that uh, the concern time to time with the police uh, that Jesse James Brown need uh, and professional help. Um, that comes to my mind. Okay. So in your mind, uh, does Mr. Brown have any reason to say anything to the two of you at all? Did uh, I understand? No. <clears throat> okay. All right. Mr. Brown. Okay. So uh, you saw I, uh, did you get the uh, 150 pages worth of documents I sent to you, sir? I did. Did I read every one of them? No. So much. I know. Okay. That. So uh, did, and I, I've, I've, I've narrowed the issue. We're not talking yes. about the gate. I know. Just the relationship between you and, in this case, the Avery's. Yes, sir. I understand. Um, I was. Um, I also want to put on there 
that I have a current lawsuit against them. That I'm, po- not current, I'm posting it today into court. And um, one thing I put on my response that was incorrect, my apologies for that, is that I said that in the original report, George Nivak did not pull a gun. I reread that and he did say that he did pull a gun and that was incorrect on there. I just want to re- correct my, um, okay, my, my privilege on that. And um, also um, I have their attachment for what their complaints are. And I wanted to go over that minus the gate, um, obviously, um, of these points that they um, said and the counterpoints to them. Is that okay, sir? It, how about this? I mean, oh, your honor. Just, sir, just, that's okay. Just sort of summarize it. Okay. Um, it's, I think, started when I first moved in. Uh, when I first moved in, Idol and Avery, Idol Avery said that um, he moved the beaver down off the property. And I told him that was illegal. We can't do that. It's a felony. Um, and I, here because I'm trying to start a nursery. I told him at the very beginning. Um, you remember, I've, I've read what's in your- Yes, what's yes, sir. Um, um, I haven't, I've been on medication for the past two years um, as well too, for serotonin um, imbalance as well. I've been perfectly balanced mentally since then. And I have not done any of that. I have not lived in that house that they said for the past two years. I have two RVs on the property, both fully functional, and they're being used for an agricultural building involving house plants, snake plants, vine plants, and also seed propagation. Because I am working for a nonprofit person named Brian Colbo, I've known since Media Island when I was a teenager. Um, and he's been seed restoration for over 10 years. Basically, that building that, because um, um, the thing I lived in, it's an agriculture board. There's also statements in here saying that I was banned from Tanana Market. I went to the Tanana Market that day of, I got this. I did remember I, I read. Yes, sir. I Sorry, read, sir. read that. Um, um, uh, but many of the things, I've never screamed at him. What I said is, I have police reports. Here they are. And I even left police reports on his gate in between the things so he read them all. I've left him everything so he knows what's going on. You know, I have absolutely no interest at all doing anything criminal against these people it terrifies me my dad was in prison my whole life i don't want that for my kid or my one to be at all i want to start a lawsuit against these people i'm starting a lawsuit against my neighbor lewis Wilman, as you see in the documents that's been followed on friday i don't know if you saw that um and most i'm trying about these people for damages and harassment did you did you see that one um paper that they put in my mailbox to the mail this pants pull down um, that paper as well. There's been numerous other papers and the Ward of Night paper is very similar to the one that says protect your children that has been circulated throughout town, town <sighs> immensely. I've been random phone calls throughout the years regarding these and has made it so I was unable to obtain any kind of fulfill, fulfilling jobs in my area because so I've been reduced to odd jobs because I just don't want to like, it's a panic attack, all this stuff's going on. As you saw the plethora of police reports that I have posted um, pertaining to my mailbox and things and um, reports that have been proven false that has been um, um, done by neighbors, as it says. And I only have problems with two neighbors, and that is one, Lewis Woman and Ido Avery, who know each other and also know Diane Kremen that has been proven on a paperwork Lewis Williams sent to the courts on August 29th, 2022, proving that they did know Lewis Willman and Diana Kremen, the person who is responsible in, for the theft of my dogs, or I should say she's in the prosecutor's office um, for first degree theft of my animals, who when I first talked to him, asked him, they said, I don't know these people. I remember, I, I read that in there. I'm sorry, I forgot everything I put on there exactly. And um, all this stuff. Um, the gate was, I don't, uh, there's a 30 foot fence on both sides of um, the entrance to my property. It's not just uh, um, one blocks things they cannot go in. There's a 30 foot on both sides. On the other side, I have a small playground and a garden. It's completely inaccessible for its private property. Um, um, let's see. Sorry, just one second. I did moon them. Um, yes, I was on my property. I was off on the side because for years, um, I did not submit a police report and I did not get here in time to do so. Um, am I able to read that police report to you, sir? You don't need to. Just tell me. Um, on, let me make sure I get the date. 8-15-2020. Um, 
I don't agree. And Joan Avery stopped to find my property with the vehicle. The woman I was with at the time was inside the house undressed and he kept on calling in and trying to talk to her. She came very, because um, he, because of the beaver thing, we've never got along and we've just tried to not talk to him, but she had to call the police and the police said he cannot stop them from like um, using the um, easement, but he cannot stop and yell at us through the easement. There's also a report done actually today, four years ago, May 13th, maybe it's the 14th to county, um, saying that my daughter, River Rose Spires, I'm not sure this is on the thing, was pooping by the side of the creek. Uh, my creek is very, very private spot that's way off the road. You would have to look really hard to see her down there. She was swimming naked on there. I got this report a few weeks ago and I did say, yes, I feel like he is pedophile because of that sort. I did not yell this to him. Um, I just um, said my feelings on that matter because he was watching my at that time, five-year-old girls from naked in my private creek and then did a report to county saying that I, um, I put an outhouse in the creek and that she was pooping in the creek um, and things like I, that. I, I, I read did. that in the book. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm not exactly sure. I couldn't find that. They only did one copy yeah. for that. Um, so two times, my wife said, that is not a good idea. And I agreed because I'm just terrified of being arrested if anything illegal happening to me. And the reason I talk loud about the gate because I don't want to get near them. I've had a bullet left in my mailbox. It's up in a Lewis Wellman with the gunman. Um, I, every time I go there, I've, I, I really do feel like my life is under threat. My heart races. My hands start to sweat. I just feel like something's got to happen every single time. So two times after I got that, I am... Um, said that and that was around the same time that my cats went missing um one night uh, i went to the far end of my property i was looking for my cat it has been gone for two weeks by that time and i saw him outside and i yelled have you seen my cat i think it was a is a reply was f you to me um the next morning my other cat black cat went missing i didn't want this cat to her. just so you know i didn't wasn't trying to get cats my kid's mom said, I found these two cats on the side of the road. They were tiny little kittens. I could hardly walk. So I said, okay, I'll take them home. You know, my dogs and my cats got along. They're so cute. Um, and there are indoor, outdoor cats that stayed right next to the, um, the building, the agriculture building. They had their own cat house. I had a big pillow in there. It was covered so it couldn't get wet. Perfectly nice. They can come indoor and outdoor when it's cold. That day, uh, that next morning, um, Ido dri is driving really fast down the easement. His back trunk is open. And he seems kind of disarrayed and he gets out, he goes on the other side of the thing, he shuts his trunk and he takes off really fast. And that's the last time I've ever seen him a cat. So I <laughs> can you so stay muted, please. Okay. And because um, there is association with um, him, Dinah Crimmon and Lewis Women, um, uh, Dino Crimin um, was involved with theft of the animals. And the fact that my animal jinx went missing on September 5th. 5th um, the thing is, jinx, uh, yes, she was a young dog and she, was, she went to a couple of houses. She was a half newbie. She was very friendly. She just wanted the attention while I was gone. If I was gone for a little bit too long, she'd go to neighbors. But she never just left and then went up the the road or anything like that. She didn't, and the kind of season it was in, it was not coyote season. And she was microchipped as well. Um, considering that I had past dog theft on my property with people that um, Ido and, and Joan both know and is in communication with, I do feel that is good reasonable cause that they are associated in some form with that considering the past um, actions that has been done to my property and to me and considering the plethora of letters that have been sent to the community to my family I haven't been able to talk to my family because everybody I talk to wants me to sell my property and to leave and I just I love it there I have an open pasture I want to make a nursery there I want to make a life for my family I am in contact with TSC I have talked to them about installing an electrical box over there I am involved with I am talking with environmental services about getting a septic system in there. I'm, in, I'm talking to that septic to get my septic system put in. I'm talking to the building department as well, too. I'm finishing up my master plan where the wetlands are. I've been doing everything I need to do legally. I have no interest at all in doing anything against the law. 
Okay, so let me, let me ask you some questions. Yes, sir. So when the avenaries come in and out the easement, is there any reason that you have to approach their cars or any reason you have to say anything to them at all? Uh, not anymore, no. no. I won't say a single word to them again. I, I let them know about the court cases. I let them know. Um, you, yeah, you can't serve them the court cases. That, you know, oh, I know, I gotta gonna... give it to the court and it's mailed to them. Okay. Um, I already have one with Lewis Willem done. Uh, okay, all right. So you don't see any reason you have to speak to the Aveners? I will never speak to him again, Your Honor. Okay. I have no and interest in that. you won't moon anybody? No, Your Honor. And I just want to put on there, I have a police report with that. I okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, just, sir. I'm just going forward. That, yes, your sir. clothes will stay on when you're dealing with you know, folks on the easement. Yes, sir. Um, I have one question. Sure. Um, I am worried that me and my wife like to sunbathe nowhere near the easement at all is that still allowed yeah, yeah yeah it's your property you do what you want but this seemed directed mooning means you're directed at some that's directed at somebody else yes your honor okay and so yes it was th that, that won't happen again yes your honor i won't okay. do that again i was just trying to get them to call the police so the police could tell them you can't film off the property while i'm on okay. the i should have done that better but i can't talk to these people there's a huge language barrier for me and i don't i don't know what he's saying half the time and i don't okay. think so insult accents at all. I think accents are wonderful. It's just hard for me to understand. Okay. You know? Right. So I just want to make sure you, you understand that dropping your pants and mooning somebody is not an appropriate thing to do. Yeah. And and you don't see any need that you have to converse with the Avenries when they go up and down the east. I don't say anything to them at all. And if they want to just leave the gate open when they go, I mean, I can that's okay. Um, if I'm home, so I can just shut it. If they see that I'm home and they just want to drive by, fine. I mean, it's like you have my permission to leave the gate open when you drive through without shutting it behind you. If that makes you feel better, okay? All right. Um, I Good. just, okay. All right. Thanks, Mr. Brown. Uh, Aiden Reese, have anything else you want to add? <clears throat> well, many of the things that he was saying was actually a fabricating story. And uh, Jesse Brown already threatened us in the past to shoot us. And recently he threatened us uh, that we will cut our electricity cable because we know what it is. And about this incident 2020 is actually is uh, incorrect because uh, Jesse and an ex uh, were having an interaction on the easement and my wife was walking on our easement and by the gate, our gate, and Jesse just jumped up and started shouting and screaming at my wife. And I went and approached uh, Brown and asked him to stop arrest, harassing us while we are on our property. And I told him, I'm going to call the police. And he said, no, he's going to call the police and report that. And so he, he called the police. So, and the police talked to them and then they came to us and and he talked to the ex, so the story about us parking the car is incorrect. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, absolutely incorrect. Mm -hmm. So, and then they came to us and we told our story. And, and yeah, and that's it. All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah Mr. Brown, you had one other thing? Yes, sir. Um, so I just want to put on it. I'm not sure if I put on the thing, but he said he said that I was banned from the Tanana Market that same day. I talked to um, the manager wasn't there, so I talked to the assistant manager, who, and there was a police um, that was there as well, where I spoke to them with the police, and I talked to four people who were check cat check out there. I go to that market all the time. I just want to say that comment that they said was completely false. Um, right. I, I'm not trying. I know. I'm sorry. I said that was bad wordage. No, 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 um, no. You had you had. That was all in the material you submitted. Okay. Um, and also, um, I have, I know you can't look at it because I didn't follow this one with the other police reports, but that case I was speaking of is right here and it does comment the neighbors parking in the front yelling at me. Um, I was not there when they got there. It was my wife who was home alone and I came, not my wife, excuse me, my the lady I was dating at the time. Okay. Um, she was home alone and when he approached and I, um, and then I came home you know, after the fact and learn everything happened, everything. But she was there by herself um, when that happened. And also with the 
PSC, I have um, emails verifying that I'm communicating with PSC about the electrical easement going through the property. I have no interest in killing myself at all by touching electricity on the line. I'm not stupid. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm not. I don't do that. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, uh, sorry. Last thing. I'm really sorry. Um, and when the gate, I was in there, we both came to the gate at the same time. Um, how the police officer did say that Ido was changing his story. Um, I have a police report in there that mm -hmm. he, that that police says that well, when uh, he said that he can request a video from Jesse, Ido started act strangely and said never mind and um, dismissed it. Um, and that that was recorded on that time because I wasn't I, me and him just got to the gate at the same time. I was just running in to grab something fast and going, and he was grabbing a package at the same time. And I asked him. You know, have, you know, did you did you steal my cat? Were you involved with it? And he said, F you to me. And he got in his car and he drove back with less. I said, I wouldn't do it. He said, I know, I know. He said, flip me off. And then like, what the hell? And I'm still walking. I'm still walking to the house to get the thing. And he's just driving off back faster, you know? Um, and the police came later on and uh, they confirmed this. And also the report that was done by George Nivak with them. He's saying that um, when I pushed him, it hurt his back, but in a previous report, he says that he had a bad back, and also I um, showed that nudge to the police officer. And in that report, it says they're very clear. I'm not sure if that one's in there. If you read it, that I was not interested in charging George Nivak with the crime I, because I, he was I didn't a see that in everything. Yeah, I, I saw all that. So I was just, I'm not trying to do anything to hurt anybody or do anything. I'm just trying to make it so I have a peaceful life and I can just be left alone. Okay. And I just, as you see, the plethora of documents. Sorry, sir. And that's it. That's okay. All right. Uh, as I indicated, I had read the material the parties had filed, and they are community neighbors. And there's an issue with the gate, which I indicated to both parties the gate across the easement that this court does not have jurisdiction to make a determination on. So I can't address the issue of the gate, I can't address the nature of the contact between the parties. And in this case, I am going to enter an order directing Mr. Brown to have no contact uh, verbally with the Aveneries. You're not to moon them. You're to have no contact with them. So if you are going to file a lawsuit against them, you have to have them served by somebody else, not you. And you can deal with them in court. But outside of that, you shouldn't say anything at all to the Aveneries. <laughs> and the Aveneries, uh, understanding that, you shouldn't say anything to Mr. Brown. <laughs> Uh, but the order here is to Mr. Brown not to say anything at all to Mr. to the Aveneries and you're not to go onto their property at all. Absolutely. And this order will be in effect for one year from today's date. And if the Aveneries wish it to be renewed, you'll have to come back to court and seek it to be renewed at that time. Uh, Mr. Brown is present in court, so we'll make a copy of the order for him now. And for the Aveneries, if you wish to get a copy of the order, it's available in your uh, district court file. You can contact the court and get a copy of that. Okay. All right. Thank you, folks. And Mr. Brown, just sit tight. We'll get you a copy of that. Yes, sir. I can I ask one question? Is it just a verbal, or if I go to the store and he's at the store, do I have to run away? No, you don't have to leave. You just you cannot have contact. Yeah, you can't fine. say anything, can't flip them off, can't do anything. No mooning. Nothing. Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry. And um, am I able to still put a restraining, um, file a restraining order against these two individuals, or is that I'm unable to because of this? Because I would like to have something so they can. Um, uh, Keep well, to film me on my we, we've, we've just talked about it with the Avery's and I've indicated to them that they shouldn't have contact with you. And if you think that they violate that going forward and then you can make you can always file a request. There's nothing that prohibits you from doing that. Yes, sir. But and for now, I'm, I'm satisfied that there's not a basis for me to enter the order as of today. But if something going forward happens, you can bring that to the attention of the court. Thank you very much. I appreciate okay. that. I won't talk to them. All right. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Yana. Thank you, Yana. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Are you still there? Mr. Snavely. Yeah. Mr. McNally was served on the 2nd of May. Yeah. I don't see any appearance from Mr. McNally today. And the temporary order that was entered on the Second, uh, or that was previously entered, will go in effect, and I'll sign an order to that effect. Um, so I'm just curious, what will the restraining order do now? 
And I'll run through that for you in just a moment. So okay. sit tight. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. McAnally is a neighbor of yours. Is that right? Yeah, he lives 15 feet away from my front door. He's just directly across the hall. Okay. All right. And John, I know you. Is that right? That is correct, sir. Okay. How are you doing? I've been doing great. Aside from this, I've okay. been loving this. <laughs> <laughs> good to hear and you said uh mr mcanally lives right across the hall from you yes that's correct okay all right john i've entered the full order and what that means is the order that you had on a temporary basis now is extended for an additional year if you want it renewed you'll have to come back to court and ask for it to be renewed at that time and uh, I've also changed the distance restriction because I think it's somewhat confusing in a temporary order since he lives directly across the hall from you. And it was the intent of the judge not to have him evicted as a result of this order. So I've said, based on what you told me, that he's 15 feet away from you, I've said he can't come within five feet of you. So he's got to stay away from your door and he has to stay away from you. And he's uh -huh. to have no contact with you wherever you are. I'm, he's escalated a little bit since he's noticed this and yeah. he, he walks by and jiggles my door and he's harassing my guests and I just, I don't know what to do aside from move out of here and I don't want to. Right. Uh, well, if he's in, I mean, you can report to law enforcement that he's violating the terms of the order. So it's, this is going to be a lot easier for them to enforce if he comes within five feet of your door. Uh that is to reach your door handle, uh, or he has contact with you, uh, then he's in violation of the order. Now, uh, the order doesn't say anything about your guests and assuming your guests are not your children. Uh, that, so if they're just adults, you know, those folks would have to file a protection order themselves to seek protection from Mr. McNally. But this order prohibits him from coming within five feet of your residence and coming within five feet of you at any point, and he cannot have contact with you. So if you feel like that's been violated, then you report that to law enforcement. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. And, uh, I mean, go ahead. Did you have anything more? Uh, no, I guess not. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll, uh, a copy of this is available to you in your district court file because Mr. McAnally was previously served with this. I will note he does not need to be reserved. The only change I've made is to reduce the distance so that it's more enforceable, making it five feet instead of 100 feet uh, since he lives directly across the hall from you. Uh, and <clears throat> you may want to take a copy of this order to uh, the landlord for the building or the property manager for the building or whoever is the one who sort of manages the building so they're aware of it. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks, John. Glad to hear you're doing well. Thank you, Mr. Buckley. All right. Bye-bye. And based on their failure to appear, the protection order that uh, I previously had entered uh, will be terminated today. Thank you, you Welcome. And now, you know, just, I know you're a sharp guy, so you know this, but it uh, doesn't mean she doesn't uh doesn't mean that her desire not to have you contact her uh, yes, disappears. She has made that clear by filing this request. She doesn't want you to contact her. Yeah, that's fine. I was really I was willing to uh accept whatever everything or she wants to add. I'm done with it. So let's right. uh leave like you said though and uh, I'll leave her alone. Okay. Very good. I'm gonna sign that order and it'll be available to you. Uh, the order denying the request for the full order, I'm gonna sign that. Uh, and that's available to you in your district court file. And you don't need to wait around for me just to put the signature to it. I'm going to do it right now. So thank you. Right. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Right. Stop video. Glad you showed up. I was going to dismiss your action. I didn't see you earlier. Oh, I've been here. I was one or two minutes late, but I've been here. Okay. All right. Well, Mr. NOA has not appeared. I do see that he was actually served on the 6th of May. And based on that, I will reissue or I will sign the full order and two of you never resided together is that correct 
Correct. Do you have five children? Uh, yes, I have five under the age of 18. I have one that's in Utah that's over the age. Sounds like my family. <laughs> Don't ask about my brothers and sisters. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> All right, I have signed a protection order. It will be in effect for one year from today's date. It's under the exact same terms as the temporary order was. Because it's under the same terms, it does not need to be reserved on Mr. Inouye, so it is already in effect. If you want it renewed, you'll have to come back to court and ask for it to be renewed. Okay. Thank All you, right, Your Honor. Be, yes, it's available to you in your district court file if you wish to get a copy. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Have a good day. You as well. Bye-bye. Oh, and that will conclude our protection order. Oops. Calendar, I'll need to do a uh, dismissal. On